Hi, in this video, we're going to look at a nested if function. So why would you need a nested if function? Well, an if function on its own is capable of returning one of true results, either the true result or the false result. If you remember, your if function has three arguments, a test and then a value of true result and a value of false result. Now, in some circumstances, you need more than two possible results. And here is one, it's a fairly simple example. But in this example, I want to change the blues to purple, the reds to green, but all other colors stay the same. So you might do this to convert names or job role titles or something like that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at two solutions to this, one of which is nested if, and the other is ifs. Now the ifs function is relatively new, but it will do the same job, and I think it's it's simpler to use. Uh, you'll have to check your version of Excel to see if you have the ifs function. But either way, you'll better do one of the solutions. Nested if is available, whatever version of Excel you have. Now, what I'm gonna do is start off with looking to see whether the color is blue. So my first test will be, is A2 equal to blue? And I'm gonna fix that reference with F4. And I'm gonna say, if it's true, then I want it to become purple in this column. Now, that will cope with any blue colors, but it won't co cope with any red colors that need to become green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another if, but in the value of false for my current if. So I'm going to say if again, and I'm going to say, is this color equal to a red? If true, make it green. So what's going to happen is, is the, uh, the function is going to work like this. First of all, it will check to see whether the color is blue. And if it is, it will return the value of true, which is purple, and it would stop there. But if this test isn't met, then it will hop over to the value of false, which is another if statement. So it will run this test and it will say, is the color red? If true, return green. And if that test is met, it will stop there. So it will basically run these tests left to right. If that test is met, it stops there. If not, it will run this test. If that test is met, it will stop there. So you then have your final value of false. Now the value of false in this scenario will be the original color, as in the color won't change. Now what you will have to do is close the formula with two brackets. The first bracket closes the nested if, the second bracket the uh, original if. Okay, press enter, and I copy down, and you can see that the blues have become purple, the reds have become green, but the yellow stays yellow, the brown stays as brown, and the pink stays as pink. Now you could continue to nest levels, 64 levels deep within Excel, that would make an essay rather than a formula, but it would potentially work. So that's the nested if version of the formula. Now, ifs, as I said, this is relatively new in Excel. It will do the job. Now, the ifs function works slightly differently. It doesn't have a value of false. What it has is a series of tests and a value of true for those tests. So you'd start by saying, is this color blue? And again, I'm gonna fix it. If true, return the color purple. And then you're on to your second logical test, which is non mandatory. And you'd say, is the color red? If true, just move this out of the way for you, then make it green. And so on and so forth. You've then got logical test three, etc. Now, we then need to do that will convert reds to purple, red, uh, sorry, blues to purple, reds to green but it doesn't deal with the other colors. 
Now, what we wouldn't want to do is go through and say, if the color is yellow, make it yellow. If it's brown, make it brown. If it's pink, make it pink. That would make a much longer formula than our nested if. So what you can do is you can say, if none of these tests are met, this is what you do. Now, to do this, your last logical test must just be true. So you write true in, and then the result for that you can then specify, so it would be the original color. So if I close the bracket now, that works in the same way and returns the same results. Let's look at another example where we need to complete this status column. And the status for these invoices are either overdue, due today, or okay. Okay, because it's not due. Uh, not due currently anyway. So uh, what we're going to do, I'm going to start off with a test here. Um, I want to check whether this date is in the past. Now, what I could do is I could say, is the date due less than today? Now, if you've not come across the today function before, basically it returns today's date, but keeps that date up to date. So that tells me that date is overdue and if I copy this down the rest of the dates including today's date uh, it returns false because the dates are not in the past so this is a test a good test to perform if you want to work out whether a date is in the past okay now that is the first test I want to perform so I'm going to put it within the if statement so if this date is in the past the status is going to be uh, overdue overdue now uh, as i said we've got three possible results we want to return so my next uh, my nested if is going to run another logical test and that's going to say is this date equal to today equal to today. So if that is true, my status is going to be uh, due today. And that then leaves me with a final option value of false, which basically I don't need to write a test for because if it's not overdue and it's not due today, then the invoice status is okay. It's not due. Okay, so if I copy that down, you can see that I get the correct results. Today's date is the 20th of the 2nd, 2020. So it starts the logical test from the left hand side. If this test is met, it returns the value of true. If not, it goes to the second if statement. It runs this test. And if that is true, it returns due today. And then finally, it returns the value of false. So it only gets to this value of false if neither of these tests are met. And that's how that nested if works. I could also do it with an ifs function. So logical one would be, uh, is this date in the past? Is it less than today's date? And I could say um, if true overdue. Second test would be is this date equal to today? If true, it's due today. And then I'd say true. Um, and then the, if neither of those tests are met, then we know that the invoice is okay. And those results all work in the same way. So it depends which version you like. I personally like the new ifs function. I think it's slightly cleaner and easier to read. But if you don't have that, then you can use your old fashioned nested if. Okay, thank you very much for listening. Hopefully that's been useful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're finding these tips and tricks 
useful 